you've got a vehicle that won't start. It's outside. You've got to get it in your shop to be able to test it. If your shop's anything like mine, I've got a little bit of an incline, so the cars that come in have to go up just a slight little bit of a hill. They're pretty hard to push. It'd be much better if we could just drive that in. Maybe you beat on the bottom of the gas tank, it starts and runs so you can drive it into your shop to change a fuel pump. But what about those vehicles where when you beat them up on the bottom of the gas tank, it doesn't start and run? Here's something that can help you. It'll both diagnose it and help you get it in to your shop. So I'm sure you've probably tried to beat on the bottom of the gas tank and that didn't start it. So we've got to still get gas, get fuel up to the engine. Well, we're going to make our own fuel tank and our own fuel pump. And when we hook that up, if it runs, then that pretty well confirms that. But it also helps you get it up into your shop so you can test it. All you need is a can like this. Many of you have them. If you don't, they're usually sold in the air conditioning tool department because this is a AC flush can that you use to flush an AC system. It'll look like this, but it'll come with a nozzle that'll be right on here. Simply take that nozzle off and then just make up something like this. All these parts you should be able to find in a master fuel injection kit. You may have to try different fittings to get them right to fit, but if you have a kit like this, you should have everything you need. So you take your fuel injection test kit. This comes in all the master fuel injection kits. So that you can bleed it off, you'll have a gauge to read your pressure, a bleed off line, bleed off valve, and this will go to our fittings that we've made. We've set them up for a quick neck, so it'll go right there. This one will go right here. That one will go to the Schrader valve on the vehicle. Now we've also got a valve in here so that you can turn, open your fuel up, allow it to flow or not. Then it goes over to here. This will become your fuel tank. You simply take this off and pour just a couple inches of gasoline in there. And this is your fuel pump. You hook that on there. Fill it up with fuel or with pressure. So now you've got a fuel tank providing pressure that's going to go through here. You'll be able to read the gauge, see what your pressure is. You can control the flow and you're going to go right to the fuel port. So now we'll hook it, hook it all up and show you how it works. There's our Schrader port and our first line is going right there. We'll hook our device up to it. Now we need to add a little pressure. We just use the regular type of tire deal that's got a gauge in it. Our fuel pressure specs about 60. Now we come down here and open our valve. And then we'll look at the pressure gauge and we've got about 40 PSI showing. Now we crank it. Had to fill that fuel line up first. Starts and runs. like my shop I get a lot of vehicles that are left outside the gate overnight. Tow trucks drop them off. Sometimes if they just crank or won't start we'll put this on here. If it drives right up then we know we're looking for a fuel delivery problem. But it's a whole lot better than pushing them up the hill. Now, we've had this running for about five minutes on that amount of fuel. Sure, you're not going to drive across town or even a mile or two but you can sure drive it around the shop and get it in. It's a whole lot better than pushing. Don't go by the book! Think like a pirate.